True story. One of our instructors was once almost kicked out of a hospital fitness program because her class had the name Tai Chi. See, it was a Catholic hospital, and they were afraid that the Tai Chi might interfere with their religious beliefs. So, if you've ever wondered or been asked if Tai Chi is a religion, stick around, because I'm going to tell you what we told the teacher and how we made the hospital very happy. Hi everybody, it's David Dorian Ross, and welcome to another episode of Learn Tai Chi at Home. Today is day number 51 of 100 Days of Tai Chi, the video series in which you can learn the entire 103 movement Yang style Tai Chi long form. Now, if this is your first time to this channel, and you're a beginner who wants to start learning Tai Chi at home, or if you're a more advanced student who wants to just pick up some tips and insights to go along with the lessons you're taking from your teacher, then the best way to get started is to hit the subscribe button. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you the movement Single Whip. And yes, I know it's a movement that we've covered before, but today there's a special twist to the movement. And by the way, if you're new to this channel and haven't seen any of the earlier episodes, I'm putting a link up above where you can watch the episode where we taught single whip the first time. So if you're ready to get started, I say we just dive right into the lesson. Today's movement is called Diagonal Single Whip. And it's a movement very similar to the other single whips that we've done before, except that the orientation, the direction in which we step out, is a little different. Now, so far we've done single whip a couple of times, and it's all been arranged on this basic lane, this basic travel from left to right or from east to west. Today's movement, however, is going to cut across that lane at a diagonal angle. Let's take a look at it one time, and then we'll come back and break it down together. Now let's take a look at the footwork. We're going to start from a position where the right toe is pointing straight forward. This would be towards the open the door position. The left foot is at a T-step uh, to start with here, and we're going to see how this T-step is actually going to start off with the foot extended out a little bit. From this weight on the right foot position, the left foot steps forward into the corner to make a bow step. One simple step, that's all it is. Right? From this T-step position, step forward into the corner. Both. Now what's unique about this particular footwork is the angle, as I said, is the orientation. We have done single whip before on the lane here. Notice that this single whip is diagonal across the lane, which is why the movement got its name, diagonal single whip. Now here's what the hands are doing. Much in the same way as the other single whips have done, we're going to start off in a position where the right hand is making a hook and the left hand is ward off arm right by the hook here. The left arm elbow is dropped down here. And as I shift into my bow step, it's going to sort of ward off all the way around in an arc until it lines up over the left knee, over the left leg right there and palm rotates out to the final position. In the final position, the right hand hook is extending just behind the right leg, while the left hand is going out right over the top of the left leg. And then as you settle into the finish of this position, everything sort of expands. You get a little bit longer, longer through the body. The torso, of course, is making all of this happen, all the connection between the footwork and the hands. So the torso is going to rotate from right to left, turning, and that's how you get this ward off hand to open, 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 open. But it does not turn all the way. Remember, we don't square off in single whip. We leave part of the hip open. So I'm actually going to finish with my torso, with my waist, pointing towards the open the door position. My palm strike, my single whip hand, is pointing into the corner because that's where the leg is 
situated. And so the leg and the arm, leg and arm, are parallel to each other, but my body is opened out away from it, and the hook hand is open to the other corner behind. Let me show you that one more time from a mirror image position. Now, here's the tricky but wonderful and very interesting part of this movement, and that is the transition that gets us from the end of Kerry Tiger to the mountain into single whip, into the starting position of single whip. So remember, the starting position for single whip is my weight is on the right foot and my left foot is in a T-step. Now, what's going to happen is that I'm not going to bring this left foot all the way in. It's going to be in... Um, Here's what's happening here. As I turn around, I am repositioning from an earlier bow step, and this foot is going to wind up being essentially a T-step, an empty, nothing foot. But it's not going to necessarily come in to go out again. It's just going to stay where it was and then go farther. <laughs> Watch me one time, and, and then we'll break just this part down, just the transition. First, the footwork. I am in a bow step facing into this wide corner, remember, for the end of Kerry Tiger to the Mountain. My weight shifts back, emptying out the right foot, and my waist turns to the left, cranking this right toe in as far as possible. Then it comes back to the right foot, and there's that emptying out. There's actually a little pivot that happens on the toes of the left foot to get all the weight off of it so there's no twisting of the knee joints there. From that position, the left foot then steps farther out, creating both width and length to make a new bow step for single whip. The hands do the same thing they've done in the earlier single whip, but again, let's see it from a different angle. I finish from the push at the end of uh, Kerry Tiger the Mountain, and as I finish that push and I begin to empty and sit back, my hands go flat, will sweep from left to, from right to left, rather, and notice that the hands sort of bend at the wrist a little bit and lift up slightly. So the, the palms are slightly pushed up, the fingertips are slightly lifted all the way across until the fingers are pointing into the corner where I'm about to step. Then I let them fold into the body, elbows bending slightly to come closer to me, turn my waist back to the right, and reach to the corner. So they've just kind of done a big sort of circle around the plate, if you will. Coming from the push, circle around, back in, and into the corner where the right hand makes a hook. Here's my step. The left hand ward off arm all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way. Boom. So that is the transition plus the movement. But one more time, watch. The transition just needs to get you here. And then you've got the movement on top of that, right? So here's the transition from the end of the push. Sit back, circle around the plate, reach to the corner. And then comes single whip on the diagonal. Beautiful. Let's take a look at this whole movement one more time and then we'll be done. Today's viewer question of the day comes from Silent X World, who said, is Tai Chi a religion? You see, I'm a Christian, and one lady I know told me that it was. Well, Silent X World, thank you very much for that question. This is actually a question I've had asked of me many times over the 40 years that I've been teaching Tai Chi. And it's very similar to the situation that I was telling you about, where one of my teachers was at a Catholic hospital and was teaching a class called Tai Chi Fit. Well, the Catholic hospital had a policy, and they came to her and said, we can't have any classes that have the names yoga or tai chi because we believe it interferes with our religious beliefs. So, 
This is what I told to the teacher and to the hospital. Number one, Tai Chi itself is not a religion. Tai Chi is a martial arts system, a practical philosophy that's supposed to teach you how to be a better person and focuses on finding balance and harmony physically, mentally, emotionally, and if you're so inclined, spiritually. Now, Tai Chi is often associated with Taoism, which is a religion within China. And this is why I think a lot of times there's a confusion about whether or not Tai Chi is a religion in itself. But here's the thing. At the time that Tai Chi was developed, it was influenced by all three of the main religions in China, which at that time were Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. At that period in history, Christianity was virtually unknown inside China. So it got the influences that it, it had natively. But what Tai Chi wanted to do was rise above the association with any one particular religion and be a philosophy that could be for anybody of any belief. What it took away from those three religions were three core concepts, three central ideas. And these were the ideas of number one, compassion, number two, benevolence, and number three, authenticity. And so I think what you can find is that in almost any religion, these three concepts are present to be compassionate towards others, to be benevolent towards the people over whom you have power, and to be authentic, to be honest and true to yourself. And so that's what Tai Chi really promotes. By the way, the hospital was very understanding, so we simply changed the name from Tai Chi Fit to Flow Motion. So Silent X World, thank you for that question. I love that question. If you have a question about the philosophy of Tai Chi or any of the movements or any of the other practices that we do, please ask them. All you gotta do is put them in the comment section below. I'm trying to stay on top of answering every question and the really juicy ones, bring them into the video lessons themselves. My question of the day for you, however, is a tricky one. It's one that might require you to go onto a little internet search or do some research of some kind. Now here's the situation. If you've ever watched any Chinese Kung Fu movies, you'll see that the Shaolin priests always do a salute with one hand. Why is that? Why do Shaolin priests only salute with one hand rather than two hands? If you know the answer, write it down in the comments section below. And if you don't know the answer, say, I don't know, tell us the story, David Dorian and I'll do that in another episode. Well, that's it for today's lesson. I hope that you learned something and that you enjoyed every minute of it. And if you did enjoy the lesson, I'd be ever so grateful if you just go down and click that thumbs up like button. Thank you so much. Now, if after watching this lesson, you're left thinking, hmm, maybe I could learn Tai Chi at home, then I'd love to work with you by providing you with the tips and the training and the information that you're looking for. Fun all begins when you click the subscribe button because I'm telling you there are plenty more lessons where this one came from. And finally, I just want to say once again, whether you're a new viewer on this channel or you've been following all along, thank you so much once again for your time and your attention. And thank you for the opportunity to share my Tai Chi with you. I really appreciate that. Have a great evening and I'll see you in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.